We've done three quick projects in regular modeling space. Now we're going to come back and use the sculpting environment to duplicate them. We're going to explore what the differences between the two modes are and what the advantages and disadvantages of each are. So what is this sculpt thing anyway? I mean, it's not on the menu. We've got model, patch, sheet metal, render, but we don't have any sculpt. Well, it is there. It's kind of a special sub-menu of the regular model space. So, see this icon here, Create Form? If we click on that, we're taken into a special sub-mode or, you know, a special kind of workspace. And that allows you to create T-spline models. What's a T-spline? Well, it's, it's a mathematical representation of, of an object that's different than what we regularly do in model space. Let's explore it a little bit. The simplest way is to use something like a primitive in model space. So over here under create, we have box, plane, cylinder, sphere, torus, quad ball, etc. That's kind of like the, uh, the cube or the cylinder in model space. So click on that. Let's look at this. You have the regular dimensions, length, width, height, but you also have the number of faces. So if we change that, Notice that that changes the number of faces. Let's change that to 8. Oh, so we're getting a bunch now. And 8 here. Ha! Huh. So we have a lot more divisions, so we have a lot more finer control. Most of the time you want to start simple, but let's, we're going to be playing here, so let's just go ahead and do that. Click OK. So we have a body. No big deal. But you can do things with this that you simply can't do in model space. Click on Modify. You'll have a bunch of options under here. Edit Form is the default icon, but you can also insert edges, you can bridge, you can fill holes, you can thicken, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. But let's just take the, the default Edit Form. So let's zoom in and let's select something. Notice that in Edit Form we have T-Spline Entity. Well, you can select a face, you can select an edge, you can select a point, you can select by using shift, numerous faces, or edges, and faces. Now, you notice what, when you pick them, you get this special control icon. Now, instead of moving the whole form, what it does is it moves faces or edges. If you hold down Alt, you can add faces or edges. And if you continue to hold down Alt, you can also start pulling things in like that. You can, of course, do the same thing with a single face. Now, notice the transform mode, you can select individual types of transform transformations. They have the multi, which includes everything in one icon. Translation, which is basically move. Rotation and scale. Sometimes it's easier to click on that because it's kind of difficult to separate the different functions in that crowded icon. So you can see what it's doing here. It's really distorting things really quickly. We can also come in here, pick a single edge and pull that out, or a single point, and pull that out. Now, you notice I can move around and select different faces without exiting and then starting a new command. A lot of people, they like to do spaceships, that kind of stuff, and it is good for that. Start rotating. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. It's very, very simple. Very, very powerful. There are some tricks. There are some gotchas that you're not going to be familiar with. We'll cover some of them, but the main focus on this is to compare some of the things that we've done in the last three episodes and see how we might do them in Sculpt. 
first let's try to create the knob that we created the mechanical one that looked like a gas cap we're already in sculpt mode so let's create a sphere click on modify edit form and let's select a couple of faces here and make sure that with the coordinate system is world space now notice coordinate system you have world space view space and local let's just click on local sometimes you want it relative to the objects that you're working on other times you want it relative to the work plane or the regular uh, uh, coordinate system that you're used to working in so let's draw this up a little bit you can see we're starting to get that ridge like we had, or that grip like we had in the first uh, thing with just regular modeling. But, oh my gosh, d d trying to do 12 of them, that's going to be crazy. What we want to do is set symmetry. So up here, we have symmetry. Mirror internal, circular internal, mirror duplicate. There's a bunch of them that you can use. What we're going to do is uh, select circular internal. It asks for a face. And now it gives you the option of how many copies of the, um, the circular objects do you want. So if we've got 36 faces, the possible symmetries are 36, 18, 12, 9. So some, you know, an even division. Um, let's go 12 because that's what we used before. Okay. Now, you notice it put the green lines here. That means that anything that, uh, that shows you the distribution of the symmetry. Um, let's go ahead and try modify. We'll grab the faces again. Start pulling them up. And you notice it automatically selected copies of that around the around the circumference of the sphere. And everything that we do is mirrored in a circular pattern. OK. Well, that looks more like a apple or the top of a, some kind of a seed pot or something. Um, hmm. OK. That's OK. But that's not exactly what we wanted. Let's come in here and modify creases. And so you'll notice we're starting to get now a little sharper edges. Just like uh, you finish a sketch, you can finish a form and it drops you back into model space. Now we can look at this. And the neat thing about it is, once we're back in model space, we can do something like now. We sculpted something, but we also can operate on it just like we did a model. If you click on Edit Feature, right-click on Edit Feature, you can come back here and still work on it. Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's do something here. Let's turn off this body. And we're in model space. So we're going to create a cylinder. So, like I said, you can operate on it just like you do in a regular model. It's now the same. You can join them. Well, it's totally different than the mechanical knob that we had before, but it's kind of the same. And if you wanted to, you could come in and keep working on it. Yeah, that's a little bit better, although I think, I'm, I, think I messed it up. But we've got a nice little twist going on there. It's not what I intended to do. But uh, we'll, we'll play with twisting and stuff later on. But that's, that's a good start. 
Now, let's try to create the door pull using sculpting. So create sphere, and we should be able to do the same kind of stuff that we did with the mechanical looking knob. And we're getting close to what we had before. But I wanted to show you something. You can also use Revolve. So let's do the same thing that we did before. Let's create form, which will drop us into the sculpt space. Notice down here we can extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, just like the uh, regular model space. Let's go ahead and revolve. OK, so this should look familiar, revolve. That should give us enough to work with. And click OK. And we've got a Oh, wait. Oh, it's hollow. OK, this is one of the things about Sculpt. Sometimes it'll give you uh, more faces than a solid body. Now, there's plenty of ways around it. There's plenty of ways to uh, turn it into a closed body. That's what the patch base is for. There's all kinds of whole, uh, there's all there's all kinds of commands over here. Let's do fill hole and let's see, T-spine edge, fill hole, collapse. Well, let's, let's do this and see what happens. Okay, now you notice it gives us different results. So again, we have so many options. Let's do reduced star here. Maintained crease edges, sure. Now what would happen if we Unclipped, maintain creased edges. Oh, it starts to, starts to sort of automatically round the edges. I, you know, I kind of like that. Let's go OK. Keep that. And modify, fill hole, select an edge. OK. So we kind of have the same kind of wedge thing that we did before. Only a little more organic. Okay, let's finish form. Oh no. All kinds of red things and errors and oh no. Okay. That's okay. I know what's going on. I showed you this for a reason. Did you notice where all the errors are, were at? Where all of these things come together. Forms, it's, it's a magic thing. But... There are some things it just does not like. You, you run into trouble when you start forming little stars like this or little super sharp points like this because things start running together in weird ways. See, you would think that they would all come together at the same point, but you get this weird space right in here that doesn't quite work. So. The fix is simple, though. Okay, back here in the original sketch, right-click, Edit Sketch. Let's add, let's just add a rectangle. Now, we can finish sketch. Drops us right back into model space, and, well, we've got ourselves a nice little banana going on here. Now, we can do fun things that we weren't able to do before. So, modify. Now we can come back in and revolve. Now we can do the same thing that we did before. Create a circular pattern. But the neat thing is, now we can come back. I like to roll the timeline back and do it just one at a time. That way it doesn't get quite so cluttered. But you can come back in and edit the original feature. So let's make a few more modifications. Let's just play here. Let's actually first, let's set symmetry to mirror internal. We'll pick this face and this face. It'll pop a green line along the center line. It mirrors on both sides. Finish form. Roll the timeline back up. 
and I've got a completely different looking one. Now, let's say, since we're back in model space, let's just drop a, let's drop a sphere. So we've got an interesting looking version done with sculpting instead of modeling. And as you can see, we have a lot more control. We can change the shape pretty much any way we want. So now let's go take a look at lofting in the sculpt space. Okay, let's do some lofts in sculpt mode. We'll start with a sketch, do a spline, just like before in regular modeling mode. Now we'll construct some planes along path and sketch some objects onto that, those planes. Now initiate sculpt mode, clicking by clicking form, create. Loft, and the familiar dialog box opens up just like in regular modeling space. That's a pretty sturdy looking thing there, yet graceful. Now the nice thing is, since we're in Sculpt, we can come over here, select a couple of things, on symmetry, mirror internal, and we get the familiar green line here. Okay, now we should be able to come in here and, and both of them should come out here. Uh, but they're not. They're not. Uh, let's see. What's going on here? I know what's going on here. I'm just kidding you. Oh, now look at that. They're different bodies. They're different bodies. Well, different surfaces. But that's something that the uh, sculpt has to do sometimes in order to give us the kind of shapes that we want. We can do things like modify weld. Where is it? No. Weld versus vertices. Merge edges, bridge, fill hole, that kind of stuff. But for the time being, let's just play around here a little bit. Let's create another sketch. Now, let's revolve. We'll uh, go back into Sculpt, Create, Revolve. This time we're going to do something a little bit different. Let's let's scale. Okay. Now let's create a pattern. Circular pattern. So I did a circular array or a circular pattern of the more sculptural parts and put it around the center of the vase and all of a sudden you're starting to get sort of an art deco look to this thing. That's pretty cool. Now I want to do one more thing. Let's do, actually let's do it this way. Let's go in here. Notice that we're in sculpt but we already have a sketch, construct, inspect, all the normal stuff. So we can do all of that inside the sculpt environment. So let's see. Let's do a spline again. Now let's modify. No, let's create. Revolve. Create a symmetry. Circular internal.
So we're getting something kind of interesting here. But I wanted to show you something that we haven't, haven't really played with. I've done it by accident before, but I don't think I've shown that you can do it intentionally. Let's go here. Oh, so you can actually twist and turn and do all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. I've spent 20 minutes of sped up action and I've still only scratched the surface of what you can do in sculpting mode. Do yourself a favor and play around in it. It's really a great way to take your designs to the next level. Be sure to check out the Instructable that goes along with this series of videos and always subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks and happy making.